The discovery of the cannibalized remains of a young English woman from the early fort site at Jamestown has been the focus of much recent interest. Archaeologists excavated nearly 20 seasons at James Fort before physical evidence of cannibalism came to light, and those unfamiliar with the Jamestown Rediscovery Project might assume that Jane's discovery was the first time that disarticulated human remains were encountered within sealed fort period context. But in fact, there were several previous finds throughout the project. And by disarticulated, we mean human remains that are separated from the rest of the skeleton. The fill layers of Bulwark Trench, the fort's second well, and the cellar of an early work building all yielded partial human crania or skull fragments. Two of the skull fragments, the one from the Bulwark Trench and the one from the cellar, showed evidence of mortal head wounds but unlike Jane, none of these individuals showed evidence of being processed for cannibalism. For this short film, we'll take a look at one of those earlier discoveries. A curious portion of a human cranium was unearthed in 2003 from the western Fort Bulwark Trench, a defensive trench running around the outside of the corner of the fort. Forensic analysis indicated that this was a European male aged approximately 30 to 44 years. This individual sustained at least two mortal blows to the cranium. One impact involved the lower left parietal and occipital behind the ear. Radiating fractures extended from this region, indicating forceful impact by a heavy blunt-edged object. The entire section of the cranium was removed along perimortem fracture lines with a post-mortem or after-death surgical dissection that involved sawing through the cranial vault as performed in an autopsy. More remarkably, the cranial fragment showed evidence of two failed attempts at trephination with a circular trepanning saw. Trephination was a surgical procedure performed in response to head injuries, whereby surgeons removed a plug of bone from the skull to prevent a buildup of fluid that could cause pressure on the brain. The circular marks, like those that would be made by this trepanning saw found on another nearby archaeological site, were about 15 millimeters in diameter with a central guide perforation. The attempts were made at or about the time of death, and since they do not go all the way through, it appears that both efforts were aborted. English surgeon John Woodall, author of The Surgeon's Mate, outfitted the Jamestown expedition with a surgeon's chest sent with his servant John Leal in 1609. Several surgical tools that Woodall illustrates here have been found in James Ford excavations. Might Leal have been an inexperienced apprentice surgeon attempting trephination on the injured patient and soon after examining the deceased patient's injuries with an autopsy?